Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Never Go Against the Family. It's our uh, family business podcast here at UNI. Uh, we're excited to have Jane and Sarah Blaine Gilbertson with us today. Um, they are gracious enough to give us a little bit of their time. They are second and third generation leaders of Blaine's Farm and Fleet based out of Janesville, Wisconsin. Um, Janesville is home to a lot of great family companies, actually, and uh, some of those other ones we've had speak before as well. And anyway, Jane, Sarah, we're so excited to have you guys with us here for a few minutes this afternoon um, in advance of your of your uh, coming to our conference here as our keynotes for our conference in November. Um, families are talking a lot about, about this, of course, and I thought maybe we could take a little time to just get to know you here and and, and use this as an opportunity for our families to get to know you guys a little bit better in, uh, before you come over. So uh, with that said, uh, first question is probably the most obvious one to me, but is, you know, I read your background, Jane, and, and you um, you didn't in initially intend on, or at least you didn't plan on being in the, or it didn't look like you planned on being in the family company right away. You moved, you got out of Wisconsin for a while and, uh, and I just was curious if you could kind of reflect on that or what you thought your path would be. And then Sarah, if you could kind of answer that same question. Sure, yeah. So I grew up obviously working in the business in high school and college summers and Christmas breaks. Um, and I was getting a retail degree from Miami of Ohio. Um, and I really had felt strongly about I needed, I needed to go work elsewhere. Um, that wasn't part of our family policy. Uh, at the time, and I frankly wanted to go work for a department store that was quote real retail in my mind. Um, so I was saying, yeah, ouch, yeah. I hope I never said that out loud to them. But um, so, and I and actually had a number of family members that were already in the business, so that probably made it a little bit easier for me. My, I have one brother, and he was already in the business, he's older than I am, and had cousins and second cousins. So. Um, yeah, coincidentally, it was really my mom who supported the idea. My dad really wanted me back in the business. And my mom said, go, because you can always come back. Sure. And then my dad reluctantly said, go, because when you come back, you'll have this experience. <laughs> so I was still hanging in there. But um, so I went up to work for Macy's in Kansas City uh, to learn how to be a buyer, uh, which, which I did. Uh, it was a great program. They, you know, they had a premier training program at the time, so I was really fortunate to get that experience. But I also always now reflect back on the fact that that what I really was meant to learn was how not to do business. And I get, you know, uh, you know, real disrespect towards Macy's, but it, I needed to see another world, and I saw how differently they did business than the way I've been raised. A lot of things didn't align with with my values, my culture. I, I can uh, see that. So, but I wouldn't have known that had I not gone and done something else. Yeah, sometimes yeah. the best lessons are the ones about what we don't yeah. want to do. Yeah. How about so for I you? Yeah. Back, uh, yeah. I was just going to say that I did come back, obviously. Um, my mother had passed away and um, Macy's was going through a consolidation as well. I still had my promotion that was coming, but I felt like um, it, was a, it was a time to come back. Uh, and join the family business. Center. So that's how I got back here. Okay. Now, how about for you, Sarah? Yeah, um, same kind of beginnings. Uh, I worked in high school in stores and then um, throughout college, I went to Iowa State actually. Um, Woohoo! All right. <laughs> Oops, I shouldn't say that on here, but I did go to Iowa State as well. Okay. Iowa. I started as a psychology major, so I really did not want to do anything related to business. Um, okay. And then somehow found my way back um, after working a couple, one summer here, a couple summers somewhere else. Um, and then I graduated during the pandemic, so I was living at home um, and was luckily lucky enough to fall into kind of an internship um, with my former boss and then okay. have been here ever since. Um, in a, in a full time position now, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess <laughs> I kind of fell into it a little bit. But did you thought maybe this would be a place for you uh, when you were in high school, even and stuff like that? That maybe. Yeah, not as much, honestly. I kind of thought I was going to do something different. Uh, okay. Okay. Our parents were very good about not pressuring us, and uh, you know, if we wanted to come back, they wanted it to be on our terms. Um, yeah. We we wanted it to be family owned, but that didn't necessarily mean we had to work in the business. 
Um, but now as I'm kind of, you know, growing up a little bit and working in the business now, I, I really do feel like there's a home for me here. Um, and I love my job, so. I appreciate you making that great point. I think that, you know, you can be a family business and not, and not work in it. Uh, as well as, as as being active in it, of course, and so I think that that's a good reminder to to our listeners as well that uh, we got to be careful with obligations that we put on our kids and that kind of thing. And so, um, so with that said, maybe we can talk a little bit now about kind of how um, uh, how your how you maybe Jane maybe did your parenting thinking about the way that you were parented and. And and how that maybe you know you would advise other families that are that are raising kids. It's you know your kids are still, in my opinion, you know relatively young, and 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 so I, I think it's it's kind of this fresh case study that I have the opportunity to witness here, frankly, as far as how you how you've done that, how you would how you would advise other families. Do you have other thoughts on that? Yeah. Um... First comment that I share with anybody that I come across in a family business who thinks their kids are too young to be exposed, I disagree heartily saying, I don't care how old they are, uh, take them to work with you, walk the factory floor, be in the retail setting, whatever, see see the business, see, and most importantly, learn what the people are doing, get to know the people, because that's the most important thing. So. Um, I think there's a misnomer of, you know, don't do it till high school or something like that. And I, I absolutely disagree with that. I don't know that my parents did it intentionally, but, you know, when they, when they went to, to a store or a trade show, they took us with. So I got exposed to a lot of things just, you know, kind of hanging around even at a very young age. Um, and I think, you know, you never know what your, your kids are absorbing, right? And I think those are good things to absorb. So they got to see my my parents, um, and when I say that, my mom worked in the business informally and then formally later on, but I saw them, you know, how they thought about things, how they interacted, how much pride, how much fun they had actually, and also, you know, some of the hardships and, sure. uh, and I was just taking that all in. So I think that's, that's message one is they're never too young to just be exposed, you know, be yeah. around the business. Um, and, you know, I think we, my husband and I both, really tried to be very intentional with both our daughters and saying, as Sarah said, um, we want to provide you with exposure and opportunity and, and people were great about, you know, working with them when they were in high school and college. Um, but that, that wasn't our expectation of that's not what they wanted to do. And, you know, you don't know sometimes if you're young, you don't, how are you going to know? Yeah. But, um, I always wanted a, to be their choice. And the other thing we always said is, you know, you're going to have to be good. Um, like anybody else and that there would be plenty of people to help support them to learn the business and to be good in that role but you don't just get to show up um and so they always took that very seriously too and i appreciate that it wasn't an entitlement but it would always be an opportunity I th uh, that's really well put um and and just i assume you kind of got to continually go over those messages with your kids as you're bringing them up and reminding them of the potentially any way a little bit of the lens that they might be seen through by other employees or by by customers, suppliers, whatever it might be, uh, that kind of thing. I think the, the unique thing we share is I was the boss's daughter <laughs> and they're the <laughs> boss's daughter now too. So I get it. <laughs> I understand okay. what they sort through, right? I mean, there are those who are going to embrace you right away and they're excited for you and they're excited for the company to have an next gen in. And there's others who frankly are going to be tentative and they're going to hang back and, you know, just sure. kind of see. And there might be others who might try to undermine that. I mean, that's just human nature. Um, and you got to be able to recognize that pretty early on and take it for what it's worth and lean into those who really are sincere about helping you and a lot to teach you. And the girls have honestly have a very good sense of that. They figured that out very early on. So it's, you know, just like life, there's, you know, different people you have to navigate, so. I think that's well put, you know, anytime you're, and you have the benefit of working with the public, uh, you know, on a daily basis, so you know how, what we're like, you know, we're all kinds of different shades of things. Yes. And when you mention how some folks are going to be actually excited to know that there's a next gen, I think that's something that sometimes families overlook as far as they think about the negative side of how their kids are going to be potentially anyway treated or looked on by some by some people but 
there's also a big group of people that's excited to know that the company is going to go another gen. I have, I have a runway here. This isn't going to get sold out to so and so or whatever. And I think that's really critical because I think a lot of people are working at a company, a family-owned company, for some of those reasons of values and and vision and longevity and things like that. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, you mentioned that you have two daughters. So um, what what about your other daughter? What does she do? Are she still in school? No, no, she's older. She um, actually same thing. Grew up in the business, high school and college, um, but then has chosen to to go out of the, out of the company. She's she actually worked for her first job out of college. She worked for Carhartt actually, so she had a great oh. job at one of our vendors. So that was a wonderful another amazing yeah. family business. But got to see the manufacturer side of the business, um, and that's as, as a distributor. So that was great. Um, but right now, actually, she's working for a software company that's based out of Canada. So oh, she she's okay. very much, she and Sarah have been very um, pointed about wanting to make sure that the business is remains family owned. Um, and then she wants, she's always been really focused on providing the best governance, making sure they are supporting our management team. Um, and that we can continue to go forward in the best way as a family owned business. And again, so that's a perfect example of you could do it and not be day to day in the business, but she's very familiar with our board, attends board meetings, you know, is very, very well up to speed on the business. So she wants to continue to support it just in a different way. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's great. I mean, like you said, there are, there are opportunities, you know, um, we talked about the three circle model once in a while on the podcast yep. and there's certainly other ways to be involved other yes. than in it on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that's awesome. Um, maybe one last, well, I don't know if it'll be my last question, but I'm, I am trying to wrap up here too. I want to be respectful of your time, but um, going through your own succession with, from your parents to you and your brother. Um, and I don't know if there were other cousins or others involved too or not, but um you know, what have you, what have you learned from that firsthand experiences that you've gathered through succession planning that you are, you know, going to be making sure to put in place for your own succession plans, you know, uh, uh, obviously they're 50 or 60 years down the road, but whatever they might look like and, and um, just how, you, how you've, you know, taken that and maybe that, how you would spin that as advice to other families. Right. Um, well, I think it's, it's a, you, you know, this well, right? In your role, it's a unique opportunity to run a family business and to own mm -hmm. a family business. It is different. We get to make decisions for the long haul, right? We're, we're not answering to the street. We're not answering to wall street. Um, we, yeah, we answer to our shareholders, which in this case are ourselves, but we talk about answering to our, our customers, our neighbors is how we refer to our customers that they're really the ones we answer to. We have to keep them happy, you know, satisfy them, try to support them. So I think, you know, as you think about succession and what your responsibility is for a family business, the mm -hmm. success of the business is more important than, you know, any one person. So I look at it at this point, you know, sort of on the backside of my career is how do I position um, the company with the best leadership and the family firmly behind that to make sure that the company lives well beyond me. It's not about me. It's not about, you know, an individual family member. At one point, it was my dad. It was my uncle, um, my brother, myself. So done thoughtfully and well with amazing people around you. I think that's where the focus needs to be is to make sure that the family business can succeed. The people within the company are thought of first and how our customers will need us next and next and next and then yeah. you know different and we position ourselves that way it's not about us it's about making sure that the the business is um, positioned to support our neighbors and our associates and then it'll be fine you know it'll be fine whether i'm here or any generations after me that's the plan anyways no i mean that definitely you know that brings to mind the word stewardship of course and yes and I feel like that fits right in there. And and when you lead the way that you're talking about, I feel like that is a that's always an attractor of good people. You know, if you're if you're leading with those values and long term vision and knowing that 
the business is 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 the um, the focal point of decision making and not the family or not the owners or whatever it might be. I feel like yeah. that's 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 a culture that people want to be a part of. To be honest, I think I love I love that you shared that. Um, as we wrap up, I should mention that we have six new uh, laying hen chicks in our garage here that are uh, hopefully getting closer to starting to produce for me here. So Yay. my wife is a chicken person and we got them all at Blaine's, of course. And so, <laughs> oh yeah, the kids uh, showed them at, what's that? It's a fun business. No, oh, yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, this has been great. I'm so respectful of your time and and your uh, uh, coming to our conference here in November. We're excited to have you there. Really excited to have you there and kind of sharing your story with our families and sharing your lessons and, and advice with them. They're looking forward to that. So with that, I will wrap up. And uh, you've been listening to another edition of Never Go Against the Family, the UNI Family Business Center's podcast format. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Never Go Against the Family, a podcast produced by the University of Northern Iowa Family Business Center. You can find more information about the center, membership, and upcoming events at unifamilybusinesscenter.com. As Vito Corleone advises, never go against the family.